Hey everybody, this is Dave Meyer with HCX Board Gaming Studios. I'm one of the creative persons here on the team, and today we're going to be talking about painting gold and fire. The model we'll be working with is the Games Workshop model, Roboot Gilliman. Stay with us through this multi-part series as we begin painting on the Primarch of the 13th Legion. Alright, so this is the model that I'm working with. I'm going to be uh, first starting off with the Rupert Armor Gold. We're going to be using it just on the gold areas here. There's a lot of gold used in this model, a lot of fine detail. So uh, we're going to get started and here we go. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, the priming uh, first off. What uh, the priming I did was a black primer. Uh, that's not shown on camera, but then I did a little zenithal highlight uh, with uh, with a white primer just in spot areas. If you notice that uh, the, the model has some lighter blue areas, well, that's the zenithal working. It's it's uh, uh, hitting it in specific spots. So anyway, so the the mixture I've got on the Rubric Armor Gold color is a mixture of one to one water here. Uh, so and you notice my Grip on the model is always two-handed. Okay, so I'm holding it with uh, the cork there But at the same time I'm using the cork as well as my left hand as an anchor and I'm just uh, Following the gold areas and I'm just trying to be careful Now one of the things that drove me nuts about this mixture of the water one-to-one -one mixture with water and the rubric armor uh, gold is It just didn't flow well had a lot of opacity um, I had to go back and forth over a couple of times in a couple of areas, but uh, you know, for a model with a, as much detail as this one, uh, I really didn't want to have to the stress of doing that. This is supposed to be a relaxing thing, thing that I do, and man, it was, it was very stressful. So I was trying to come up with other ideas on how to make that paint flow a lot better, and I think I found a solution. So. Here we are. What I did was I used the Rubric Armor Gold and then also used the Air, Airbrush Flow Improver. Now, <clears throat> the water tends to separate the paint a lot more. Now, we always mix water with our paints, but this time I used the Airbrush Flow Improver and it helped a lot. Uh, now, everybody has different opinions. Some people use the Tamiya, but I used the Airbrush Flow Improver. I did try the Tamiya. I didn't like it with this particular paint, but it worked great. And I'm able to speed along a lot faster now because the armor is going on one coat rather than two. Now, I did have to touch up a couple of areas. Either I had a bad stroke or, or uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a bad, uh, you know, missed a spot or something like that. But I'm able to st really start picking up speed on the model. So this gold is, it, it took a while to do. I think I, I would do a portion of the, uh, of the model stop come back and whatnot so but you know here we are we're we're moving right on through it's all i'm doing is i'm concentrating on the gold uh just you know again making sure my arms are anchored uh had, had i not it would be very shaky so you just want to take your time be very slow uh, intentional and just you know trying to just be patient with yourself um, about it so this is an amazing model very good model I enjoyed painting it I learned a lot my hand got steadier I was able to, to train my my hand in better better ways as far as holding the brush but here I'm here I am I'm, I'm going through and I'm painting this model and you know at first it was it was very difficult but I learned so you just have to sit here and work with uh, with the gold color and find what works for you as far as the mixture Again, I highly recommend the Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver, mixed in one to one with the. Actually, it was less than one, uh, so probably two to one mixture uh, with the Rubric Armor Gold. So as you can see, I'm about halfway done, well, more than halfway done, with the uh, with the, the gold color, and I'm moving right along. It's going faster. Uh, having that mixture again really helped me a lot. So, okay, so. Just gonna kind of watch for a little bit and we'll get to the next part of the video so well there he is that's all the gold now we're gonna get to the part where we start talking about some fire yeah 
we're talking about the anathema sword. We're going to get to that part in just a minute. So, all right, so this is the shoulder pad. The shoulder pad uh, is goes on his right end. And this, again, we're using the same mixture. Now, I did have to use two coats on this, uh, but it came out really nice on the model. Uh, so there's one coat. I'm going to look, take care of that and let it dry. Uh, this is the piece that goes up around the back part of the model. I started painting that gold and uh, as well. Now, I'll hit that with a wash later uh, after it's dry as far as, well, actually, I hit both of those, those two last gold pieces. So, But, uh, yeah, so we're going to get to the anathema sword here now. We're going to be doing a little airbrush. So using the Citadel brand Evil Sun Scarlet, it's uh, a mixture uh, of the Airbus Flow Improver with uh, the, uh, the paint. And we're just gradually building the paint up just ever so slightly. We're just going to cover the whole thing in red. I'm not going to worry about lines and so forth. I'm just going to be painting it red. That's it. You know, we're going to make that thing look like fire. Okay. So now I've probably been working on it close to two to three minutes. It's built up nice. Okay. Now I've provided you with a mixture of a Citadel brand, Evil Sun Scarlet and Troll Slayer Orange. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a nice fade. And by mixing the colors, not necessarily mixing them, but we're putting them in the pot at the same time and it's transitioning the colors directly onto the blade. So you're getting a spray of both the orange and the red at the same time. So uh, as you can see, you can hardly see the orange at this point, but the, it's there. So now we're going true orange, uh, Troll Slayer orange now at this point. Uh, it's, we're spraying that on. So there we are. We got the Troll Slayer orange paint. We're putting that on now. We're not covering the whole sword. We're going about a little more than halfway down the blade from the top to the over halfway. You can see the orange is, is there. Got Citadel brand, Flash Gets Yellow, and Troll Slay Orange. Again, we're doing that mix. It's not a, again, I'm going to say this, it is not a direct mix. It's just I'm putting the paint in the pot at the same time as both and letting the airbrush take care of, of putting the paint on the object. Now we have the yellow coming in. It's going to really brighten things up, as yellow always does. So there we go. That paint flash gets yellow. Then we mix it in with a little white scar uh, as well to provide uh, a little bit of hint of uh, the white heat, hot flame that will be coming a little bit later on. So. Looking good. Okay, now we're hitting it with the white scar. You can see it's putting that white heat on there, the white hot flame, making that end of the blade look really hot. Now we're going to get, use that Abaddon black. And all I'm doing is hitting those, those flame licks on the outside. And then now I'm going to bring it down closer towards the, the hilt of the sword where the hand is. And you'll see why I'm doing it. I'm making that burnt look, if you will. I'll uh, bring it down there. It is providing that burnt edge look, making the red look a little even darker as well. So playing, and this is just playing with colors. That's it. So now that sword is just about done. Well, look guys, this is a, uh, that's the uh, anathema sword. We do in the other parts in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot.